and welcome to Third Eye Thinkers. I'm your host, Michelle Welch. Hi, I'm your host, Megan Benanti. Thanks for joining us today. So, uh, we're glad to be here, and we're glad you're listening in. Go for yeah. it. I'm How's it everybody you. doing today? Um, we have had quite the week, and we have really been thinking about what we wanted to talk about this week, just kind of going round and round. And actually, um, Matt and I were kicking around some ideas, um, and nice. so we were talking about um, some of the things that we do um, in whatever practice we're in, whether we're um, whatever we um, whether where we live, wherever whatever part of the country we live in, uh, where we work, where we um, in our homes, in our gardens, in our yards, um, you know, um, in certain parts of uh, the countries we live in, whatever we believe in, certain things, whether it be um, certain gods, goddesses, deities, fairies, whatever that may be, um, how do we honor or do we worship or do we not worship those certain um, deities or gods or goddesses or angels or archangels or fairies or things like that? And how do we pay homage to those, or do we not? That's sort of a long title, but um, how do we? That's not really a title; it's a topic. And, yeah, how do we? So, how do we? And do we? Um, and what's the consequence if, if we don't? And is there consequences to that? Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So we're sort, sort of thinking about that. It sort of led into it, thinking about you know um, certain places. It was kind of that story about the fairies and the. The runway, the time, the and you know this story, Megan, we've talked about it before. Uh, the runway in a certain country, and I don't remember if it was New Zealand, pardon me? In Ireland. Oh, yes, yeah. I do remember that. Remember that story? Um, it was a story where uh, there was a, a tree, and I believe it was a hawthorn tree, and um, they were building a runway, and they had a certain group of workers uh, to build a runway, and I've worked on... Uh, as an attorney for the DFW airport board before, and it was, it was a long time ago, over on noise pollution. So, you know, when you're working on a, a runway, it's a pretty big endeavor when you're adding a, a runway to a an airport. Right. Because you got a lot of stuff you're dealing with, right? You're dealing mm -hmm. with where is it going to be, Where's the, how much noise is there, and then all, all the stuff you're having to work around. But one thing we don't think about is what? Fairies. You know, here in Dallas, Texas. <laughs> Not something. No, we don't think about fairies much in the U.S. That's not a thing over here as it is in, right. in Europe. So, so yeah. So over there, uh, they ran into a bit of a problem because they ran and uh, came upon a hawthorn, I believe, bush. I believe it's a They're bush not, or tree, a tree, small tree. I think. And so it was a, a small tree then, and uh, and they had one group of workers, and they this group of workers said, "Oh no." We are not going to tear down or plow through or that tree. And, you know, runway, typically, you're not going to really go around it. No, you yeah, know, it's, it's got to be straight. More, you know, going to be mm -hmm. more expense. You're not going to all of a sudden turn your, I guess, although some may, may do that. Typically, they're straight to, to get the speed up, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, then they got it brought in another group, and they're like, oh, no, 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 we're not going to do that. And they re refused the job, and it just went on and on. And finally, they had to move that runway because of that tree that is affiliated and associated with the fae ones, the fairy ones. And they very much, so it's that serious to them. Mm -hmm. And they weren't, you know, paying homage to them, but they were actually afraid of them <laughs> because they, oh, you know, were not going to mess with them because of the ramifications of what might happen to them if they tore down that tree. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and I was thinking about this when I was um, posting earlier about, you know, bringing sort of spirituality or positivity into the workplace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, because when you had tagged me on that or were texting right. me about that, that's kind of what I yeah. thought you meant. Well, yeah, and which that's their workplace, obviously. Yeah, that was, obviously. <laughs> that was those construction workers' workplace, right? Yeah. So, yeah. And so I was trying to think along the ideas and lines, too, of how we honor our spirituality in our workplace, which in turn affects our attitude in our workplace. Mm. And um, 
and, and that might have been a slightly off track of where no, that, you were that, going. But I think that's that'll cull it down a little bit for us. Okay. So, yeah, it's a pretty broad <laughs> topic the way I introduced it. So, yeah. So, and Michelle and I both, of course, have the blessing of being in a work environment that is totally conducive to spirituality, and we do get to have all sorts of good mojo around us. But, you know, how do we look at that when you're in an office environment and say you're dealing with someone who's around you that maybe is kind of toxic um, or, you know, you're having to share a desk or, you know, sit next to that person. Mm. And, um, you know, one of the cool things my husband did for his employees last Christmas, every year he likes to get them um, a a gift. And... um, he actually was like, hey, does Michelle have any of those crystals up at Sotopia? And I was like, yeah, she's a got few. a few. <laughs> so, but he was thinking kind of a geode type of thing. Mm-hmm. So I, I texted her and like they were pulling them in boxes for him when he got there and he just loaded up. And I, I've gone into the office recently and all the, um, all the girls got crystals. I don't remember what the guys got, but mm-hmm. All the girls kept their crystals in the office. Oh, and cool. so it's really lovely because they're near their computer screens and you just have that energy and, uh, you know, that clarity is, I don't know, it just shines through beautifully yeah. there. So that's something you can always add to your office environment. Yeah, yeah I think it makes a really big difference in an office. I have a, a friend who, um, for her a medical office, now it is an alternative type of medical office. Mm-hmm. When she first um, opened it, she had um, Dr. This Dr. Pam. Yeah, Dr. Pam. She um, wanted it to be like kind of a Garden of Eden in a sense, and she had a lot of plants. Mm-hmm. And so she had just truckloads of plants brought in, and she would put in each each of her, the plants, she put some green moss agate, and she put tree moss agate and green agate because those are great for for the plants Um, Mm -hmm. and she put those in her plants and also she gridded her whole office and has um, in uh, all kinds of um, when you walk in you don't always notice but there's you know right at the front door she has a black tourmaline she has citrine and and then um, for everyone in the office she has crystals that you can put in your water Um, because then that also because it's a medical alternative medical you know, facility, mm-hmm. but the the place itself, she was everything she was thinking. She was thinking, how can I bring in not just crystals though? Um, she also brought in like some sacred geometry into mm-hmm. some some pyramid shapes, some triangle shapes into the facility too. Um, I think sacred geometry is a great addition because whether you have that, you know, in a crystal form or just in a design form, um, I think that, you know, our bodies are built on that. And I don't think it's something that we really pay attention to in a lot of ways, except sometimes if we're looking at a yoga mandala or something mm-hmm. and we go, oh, that's a pretty yogi thing, you know? Right. Um, but there really is a lot more significance to that in alignment of the body and alignment of your own energy within your body. And so, you know, if you can bring that into your environment, whether it's even, you know, a small, uh, even a, f- a small photo or clipping of some kind, that would still help. Right. Because when you, because there's, you know, everybody has those moments where they might gaze off into the distance and feel like a little, you know, tuned out. That's a perfect thing to gaze on. Mm, I agree with that. I think also if you have, um, let's say you mentioned some toxicity and the environment, I think for that, uh, certain things can be helpful while we're on crystals. I would say, you know, it depends on your, I understand that certain people, you're in environments where it will be really obvious if you have a big old statue of, let's say, one of your gods or goddesses. You know, you're, you're not going to want to maybe have that. So you could have a crystal maybe that represented one of your deities or something. Um, let's say, I mean, even having a big cross in your office, maybe that's not something, even though that's more acceptable here in the West, somebody might, a workplace may not want that. If it's over, you know, 15 people or more in the, in the workplace, they may right. not allow you to have that. So just by federal law and things like that. So you could have um, something that would represent that um, deity, that that god or goddess that you um, 
are connected to. So you could use crystals, you could use um, other symbolisms that are related to, let's say it's an Orisha, an African god or goddess that you're connected to. You can know the colors of that Orisha. So for like, if it's Oya, um, you could bring in, um, you know, the maroon and the purples and, and those colors that are associated with Oya into your office. But also crystals are a really easy way to do it. Although some people might not even want you to have crystals, you know, because some mm. people even go kind of funny on the crystals, right? So yeah. you could subtly bring it in with like fabric, you know, and mm -hmm. people might not even know what your fabric stands for, but you could set the intention that the fabric you have in your office could be representative of something that you're wanting to bring into your office. Right. Like you could cover a cushion for your chair or something mm -hmm. like that yeah. to establish that. And for me, of course, I'm going to always support anybody having plants because yeah. plants, you know, they're going to rec represent the elements. And to me, um, you know, if, even with some of the birth cards, I think that uh, like a Wheel of Fortune or a world person, um, having elemental balance can really help to smooth out your environment. And so a plant is going to represent air, earth, and water. Mm. Um, all in one, and so that it checks off three boxes. Now, it doesn't mean you have to have a lit candle for fire, but something red or carnelian, um, those can supplement in that way. But yeah. plants are literally going to be transforming the air you breathe, and right. so that's a good way to go. Yeah, um, I think, yeah, I would love that because I think that's a really um, safe you know, let's say non-threatening way. Everybody likes plants. They're they're good for everyone. They're healthy. Most people want plants in their office because there are a lot of people that are could be off put by certain things that you you know maybe your clients come in and you you really need a neutral space. You mm -hmm. know, a space that is that you don't want to be pushing any of your beliefs onto someone, right? right. And you needed a neutral space. Plants are not going to be anything that I think anybody would have a problem with. You know? Everybody welcomes plants. Yeah. And Whereas, and even crystals, even though now they are being more accepted for decorative purposes, there are people, there were, that I know that, you know, ooh, oh, do you worship the crystals? No, I just, you know, I, I love my crystals, but that doesn't mean I worship my crystals. Right. You know, but... Um, but and now they're more accepted for decorating at uh, decorative purposes. But for a while, there were a lot of people who wouldn't even want that in their you know office because it might be something. Oh, you're one of those new agey kind of people, right? right. Uh, I don't think that's as much as it was. But plants are a really good idea. Yeah, I mean, you know, when Restoration Hardware is showing crystals on all their decor and they're very simplified, you know that it's in trend. <laughs> yeah, and it's and I think that. Um, it's, it goes in and out of trend, and mm -hmm. uh, but it still, I can tell you that I, I still know people that would have a, a, t a problem with crystals being in their space. Um, yeah. I personally know some people that would, you know, here in the Bible Belt. You know what's interesting off topic? I didn't realize that, like, in Missouri, people would call that the Bible Belt. Did y'all know that? I thought the yeah. Bible Belt was, like, just down here, like, in... Texas and oh no we're the very bottom of so it so is it like straight up like the bowling alley like straight up I no it's fairly large it's kind of moves like oh, east to west but we're kind of the bottom of the bell I think oh really uh-huh is it the bell or the belt oh well it's a belt but okay. I mean like it, where it swoops down. Okay, because when you said bell, I thought, oh, my God, have I been saying that wrong all no. these years? <laughs> <laughs> no, you had it. Good. Oh, wow. It's been one of those Mandela effects. That <laughs> been, it was been bell all these years. Yeah, and totally I've been saying transformed the that. Bible belt, and it's the Bible bell. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. You're good. <laughs> You're boy, totally that good. Is a Bible Mandela effect, if I've ever Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so Missouri, I never knew that that okay. was a Bible belt. Did so, uh, no, I used to know. Um, in fact, I actually was educated on the, the Bible belt in, in school. Like, that was part of what we learned. Yeah, <laughs> Roger's nodding at me, too. So Yeah, I wasn't at all. I, didn't, I did not know that. I, we just, were, I, was, I just thought it was just, you know, my family. We were definitely in the Bible belt in Texas. 
Yeah, just right here, <laughs> for so sure. But, you know, a lot, not, not of all people, I'm not going to make fun of it because I certainly was raised in it, but uh, that no matter how you package crystals, that's not going to be accepted in plants would be. You know, I was referring to the Orishas. Um, that's um, something that uh, I was have been studying. Um, that is something definitely a very um, started in, the Africas, and then it's it moved. Um, it's even made it into you know Cuba, um, Santeria, even you know kind of is kind of dips into the Orishas, and um, we definitely uh, have people coming in and asking about the the Orishas now and the the gods and you know Yamaya and Oya and um, something that I definitely don't feel it's something that I would teach. Um, I definitely feel that would be a bit of appropriation on my part to teach Orishas, but that is something where you would definitely be, what I was talking about earlier, you would be definitely paying homage or worshiping the Orishas. And so people who, just like somebody who would um, worship and follow Christ um, or, or traditionally, you know, God of Christ in, in the Christian church, that is something that they would worship. And so that is something, you know, maybe in their workplace that, that they would want to do if they were allowed to do that. And they would, might have in their home, not mm. to get off subject, but an, an altar type thing. And it's interesting because uh, you don't, not all um, beings that you honor like the same things. So, like, if I was going to honor Megan with a birthday gift, I wouldn't give her the same present that I would give Matt. You know, right. so yeah. they're going to like different things, right? And so if I'm going to have something in my workplace to represent um, positivity, if, especially if it's some a, a being that I work with, a, a, a guide mm -hmm. that I work with, um, it's going to be different for different people. So if, if you're wondering, okay, well, I really connect with, let's say... Um, you know, I really connect with, um, I don't know, um, let's say segment from um, Egyptian, you know, the mm -hmm. Egyptian culture. Uh, what you might have in your office might be very different than somebody who says they really connect with uh, Mother Mary from, you know, uh, the, the culture from the Protestant Bible, right? Okay, so there, you're going to have very, very different things that you would put in your workplace because they're different, and how you pay homage to them would be different. And even amongst the fae folk or the fairies, you know, the things you would put and the way you'd pay homage would be very, very different. I know this isn't about necessarily the workplace, but this was very interesting about these little fairies, okay? Mm -hmm. I was looking, you know, apparently they really don't like iron, and so, um, so they don't like, like horseshoes, like people love putting like the lucky horseshoes over the door and they particularly don't like it, like in the shape, shape of a C, like a crescent moon. And I found that very, very interesting. Um, Roger will be putting one up soon because apparently everybody says I'm a fairy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have such fairy energy. I'm like, well, am I that mischievous kind? Because we think of it, all fairies as being, oh, they're all fun and light and but not all of them. No, no, no. <laughs> no, they're not. And um, and it was just funny looking at all the interesting things that they are attracted to which uh, versus things that repel them, you know. Mm -hmm. um, they, they like bread sometimes, but they don't really like a lot of salt. So that was interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that is interesting. Yeah. But back to the things that we, in a, I was kind of thinking different kinds of offices. Somebody told me one time to get, if you can't have a lot of stuff in your office, um, they said, you know, those little things that you put the sand in and you have the little mm -hmm. kind of four The little thing. zen gardens. Yeah, mm -hmm. but that's a really good thing to have in your office. Yeah, those are good. And I think an outdoor space for people when that's available, and it's pretty common now. I mean, even the way schools are designed are much more like universities, uh, high schools and that kind of thing. Um, with indoor spaces and outdoor spaces yeah. um, because that definitely changes the dynamic. Um, if there is an outdoor environment, and we've, we've seen them all around, if they're not cared for, 
and there's garbage coming around, there's garbage around and that kind of thing, it draws in sort of a negative vibe of people um, versus a place that feels finished and clean and taken care of that cultivates, you know, an energy, a different form of energy, and people want to be there. And you think about it, if there's things blooming, you're going to draw in bees and butterflies and birds and all the things that are um, drawn to that area. And it's not to say that you can't have, like, a wildscaped area, too, because if anybody in Dallas has ever been to, like, the George Bush Library, um, that's all done in three different native Texas landscapes, mm. and they imported the soil to cultivate those particular areas. And so it's not a tidy garden. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of wild, but it's abundant with wildlife and, mm. um, and abundant with people walking around and observing that and being part of that and that right. connection with nature. And it's literally off of 75. Right. So it, it, people don't even know it's there. It's kind of yeah, cool. I love it there. What uh, plant would you recommend to be the easiest plant there is to take care of in your workspace? Oh, you mean a not kill? Yeah. Um, I always think the weed that is growing outside is usually your easiest plant to care for. Now, if you want to bring a plant in, um, I will say one of my favorite things that I got this really cool orb vase and the plant goes in from the bottom and it sits on this stand and so there's actually no room for a root and so I cut off a succulent and somehow like put it in up backwards and stuck it up in there and it it's been living in there for at least six months with no root no water nothing Okay. So so that one, but I've had other ones in there that haven't lived quite as long. They'll live at least a month or two. So, um, and succul succulents are really trendy right now. Yeah. Um, they've got the big thick leaves and the water is contained within the leaf itself. Yeah. Mother-in-law's tongue is a pretty hardy plant. That's like a leaf that comes out of the ground. We call those monocots. Okay. And... Um, that's a very cool looking architectural type of plant. It's dark green with like a, a yellow rim around each Mother leaf. Mother in law's tongue. I wonder if I could use, if I would kill one of those Jezebel roots, Roger. Um, I bet you, or Jezebels. Was it Jezebel? Not Jezebel. No, the desert, you know that thing. What's it called? When it goes, go get me one of those. Would you please? What is that called? Um, who's going to bring it to me? You know, that thing, it's like a. It looks like a tumbleweed, and you put it in water. Oh, like it, it's tea. It's but it's, it's and they like open a, up. They, they bloom. open up, and we sell them here. They're um and you, Jericho, Rose of Jericho. What did I call it? Jezebel root. We sell that too, <laughs> but it's not a flower. That's yeah. just an herb. Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> I know my herbs. No, but the um Rose of Jericho. You put it down in water. Uh huh. And, and it opens. And it up. opens, and then you can take it back out. There you go. And you can take it back out, and then. It a little will close back up, and you can open it and use it 10 years later. Oh, wow. I've um, seen a tea like that, but i got to say it didn't taste nearly as good as it looked. Look at that. That's cool. We did, um, oh, that's really pretty. Isn't that? And so, literally, you can put it in the water, and it'll span, expand. You have to change the water about every two to three days, maybe a week. They're from Mexico, and they're great for love spells. Um bring life um, to any kind of love or create love sometimes it's called the resurrection flower because it'll come back to life oh well and it can resurrect your work environment there so, you go there and for go. those of us who tend to kill all our plants i would think that this might be the one for us well one of the things people have to remember about plants too is that they they all came from the outdoors and so when we bring them inside we're we're cultivating a different environment for them and so one of the things I consider if your plant is struggling it maybe it needs it if it's inside that means it's going to be genu generally a shade plant mm -hmm. uh, especially if you were in Texas most things have a hard time especially with afternoon sun so I bought something called um, earth star and it's a plant that grows on the ground well it as I re was reading about it it needed moist roots so because it grows in the bottom of the rainforest 
well, it was not happy in my house. And the minute I put it outside in the shade and I kept um, the saucer to collect the water, so it's basically damp all the time, super mm. happy outside. And it's hot okay. pink and very oh, cool. Pretty. Yeah. And this one will turn into a flower when you put it in the water. It gets oh, really pretty. Cool. Um, my grandmother was great with herbs, and I'm just the one that lived to be 106. She was great with herbs. She was a farmer, and knew all her plants. Clearly, like those you, herbs paid off. They did pay <laughs> off. And um, she always told me to get what she called that closet plant. <laughs> she goes, you just can't kill it, Michelle. And she called it a closet plant. So it kind of has the little the white flower on it, peace lily. Well, I don't even know. Oh, and it's the one that you just can't. The, I was like, the for funerals? Queen. Yeah. Yeah, but she just told me that's the kind you can't kill, Michelle. And well, guess what? Michelle can kill that too. But and then they tell me I'm a fairy. I'm clearly not a flower fairy. No, no, no. clearly that's not. Okay, though. But so that the thing as far as herb, I mean, excuse me, crystals. Back to that, that are good for your environment if you do have toxic environment is black tourmaline um, and as far as an herb that is good if you've got a lot of uh, uh, turbulence going on is, as far as spell stuff, is pine. Oh. Pine is very good, especially if you're working, you know, with people. You Maybe you're staying on. You've already turned in your notice or you, you know you're leaving, but you, you're going to serve out a certain amount of time. Um, pine is very, very good. You could even burn a pine candle. Oh, nice. It's also good to bring about money, too, but it's, it's, it's also good just for protection and just to protect you. But black tourmaline is going to be good. You know, sometimes, um, and I give this little secret out, and hopefully I never do it when I'm reading for somebody, but if, if I'm reading for somebody and they're sitting across from me and all of a sudden I just start feeling kind of, mm, I'll just put a little black tourmaline in between me and the person I'm reading for, just kind of casually. Oh, interesting. Just kind of put that black tourmaline in between me. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. It's like, oh, yeah, I now, like you. Yeah, now the gig is up. You ever wonder why I did that, Matt, when I was reading for you? I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I have so many crystals on the table. I don't. Yeah, just, I feel pretty sudden, clear. I just say, okay, there we go. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Now, I'm gonna now we know the secret. Now yep. I'm going to change crystals. Yep. <laughs> to put something else in well, there. It was interesting. I was thinking back to the 80s. There used to be a shop, and I don't even remember what it was called, but they had these wonderful quotes, and they would have, they'd be in white lettering on a black background, and there would be a pretty picture, mm. and they were like quotes on success and motivation, and mm. and I had a teacher, and she had them all hung all over the room, and I just loved that. Mm. Do you remember these? Um, I don't know, but I'm liking it. There, it was just a store, and they Maybe they had framed back. prints. Um, well, now you know we now we have at home printers, <laughs> and yeah, you know who people, does it? We need you need and you people need to do that Megan. They have a Cricut, and they'll cut it out themselves, you know. But mm -hmm. um, any kind of quote or positivity, and we do these things online all the time. But mm -hmm. you know, don't be afraid to take that into your office in a small way, um, or open your drawer. I, I actually knew a woman, she kept stuff in her drawer so she could basically um, hurt herself during the day. And, um, oh. yeah, I mean, in her office drawer. And I was like, I want you to open your drawer and find something positive for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, she, she was an obsessive picker. Mm -hmm. And so she would literally, like, pick at her face. And sometimes when I would see her, she'd have massive sores from picking mm -hmm. on herself. Yeah, it was a tough, a tough go. Yeah. Um, so, you know, whatever you can do that'll help you and, and also help the people around you because we all get in weird funks. And one of the things that we have to do is know that when we're in that funk, that energy is going off to others. And they might not um, transcribe it in the same way. They might you know, but they feel off put or out of balance around you or there's something going on with you, but they don't know if it's them. And you want to you want to be able to put out what you want to receive. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that in any environment, whether it's work or home, you know, we've got that limniscate or that infinite infinity symbol of energy that's coming and going. Mm -hmm. 
And we've got to honor that in each other. And so, you know, the idea was just to kind of come up with different ways that can help support you in that when you forget and lose your way and you're in that funk. Yeah, I, I do think you brought up an important important point. Um, I do mention it in my book. Um, it is imperative, I think, that we understand the energy and don't always go. We need to mind our own energy. So we always, I have an exercise in the book where you go through scanning your energy each morning or before you go into a setting. Um, because a lot of times we'll think, okay, well, that's something's off with their energy. And it may just be that it's not in alignment with our energy. It's not necessarily that it's off with someone else's energy or what's wrong with them. Uh, so we should always scan our energy, you know, every mentally, physically, spiritually, all our energy fields to see, you know, did I have this headache before or am I quick to blame everybody else? Am I checking my energy before I check others? You know, check yourself before you check everybody else. And because a lot of people are real quick to go, oh, that vibe's off, you know, when really a lot of times we haven't checked our own energy. And um, I've seen that a lot, no offense, but people in the store, they'll be like, oh, you know, they're they're typically they're pretty nice here. Oh, we love the vibe here, but oh, at this place, you know, we're oh, and I'm real quick to say, have you checked your energy? You know, always do an energetic scan of yourself. And if... And, and so I think that's just something really important to always scan your energy before you start. So I call it mind your own energy uh, before you start blaming everyone else's energy for what's going on. And I love that lemniscate thing. That way the flow is going to be better, you know, between the two. And you don't have to be on the same radio channel as everybody else, but it doesn't mean that something's wrong with their energy just because mm-hmm. they're on a different radio channel than you are on a different frequency. I was thinking... Um, something you said made me think about the lights too i am not a fan in a work environment of and roger knows this i I really despise strongly um fluorescent lights okay and they they really actually hurt me okay they they actually will hurt my energy for some reason um they they buzz in law that way too they buzz they um they will give me kind of a headache they 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 literally will make me kind of feel sick for some reason. And I thought I was the only one that was just like awed like this. But, no. But there's yeah. a lot of people like that. And so that's something that you um, scan your energy, you know, see if you're just, if you're okay otherwise. And then if you go into an area that they have some fluorescent lights, and then you also might want to check if you like the warm lights or the cool lights better. You know, which which lighting is better for you, warm warm lights or cool lights. And if you if you own an, a space, that's something you might want to ask your employees, you know, which what what do they function better in? Warm mm-hmm. lights or cool lights? And you know, what what is more, you know, energetic for them to be more productive? That's something to look at too. Right. Um, yeah. Which which what lights and I think also the music makes a lot if you have any oh, yeah. ambient you know in the music that you're playing makes a big difference um for our energy mm-hmm. um in a store oh totally well and to, to kind of jump back on what you were saying with um you know responding to someone else's energy and trying to kind of check on on your own the thing that we are most triggered by and other people you know the thing that we the things that really irritate us are always the qualities that we're most struggling with and the mirror. so yeah. yeah so you know we always have to go back to ourselves and it's like okay how do i improve this in myself how do i change this you know i was discussing with michelle earlier some um amusing conversations i had over dinner and my cooking this evening and but I wasn't in a bad place of receptivity for it because I could look at myself and know, hey, this wasn't my best job. And it also was, um, I'm not going to be judgmental of myself on that. Mm -mm. You know, it just wasn't that important. And so, but there's other days where that's going to get really under my skin. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because uh, I'm sorry, but cooking for your family is part of your workplace if you're, if you're me. (laughs) (laughs) so I mean we do cook for our families and that's a big part of our lives you know so well and you're a good cook most of the time but sometimes you are a good cook I'm experimental and occasionally that's not the most amazing thing but other times it's fabulous 
Yeah, so. it is well, fabulous. Good. She's an amazing cook, and she makes it all look really pretty, too. Yeah, I do try to do that. Yeah, you do. So You're quite the Martha Stewart, in a good mm. way. Well, it, once I'm dancing with Snoop Dogg and making videos, uh, then I really know I'm Martha Stewart because yeah. she is rocking my world. Well, with him we these love days. Snoop Dogg. We both love Snoop Dogg. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I got to. Martha Stewart's pretty darn cool. Yeah, she is pretty darn cool. Yeah. Sometimes. I'd, yeah. Sometimes. I mean, sometimes she kind of gets on my nerves. But yeah, I mean, I'd take her. <laughs> she does a little bit. <laughs> Snoop Dogg pretty much never gets on my nerves. Like, yeah. But um, yeah, she. I guess. Post jail, I like Martha Stewart. Yeah, I was going to say pre jail, she's, she's a pretty... little bit too snotty for me. Well, it's a humbling experience, I'm sure. Yeah, that's so. why I like her post jail. The post jail Martha All Stewart. Good. Yeah. <laughs> um, I so I think. Can, let's see. Anything else? But I was just trying to think what I would want in my little toolkit of arsenal for work. Um, herbs. Oh, sage spray. I would want, I would definitely want a little bit of sage spray in my, um, and I would get Rogers. I'm not kidding. Yeah, it's good. That's to me, he's, it's, he's won an award for it. Um, it, I've never had anybody say they don't like how it smells. Not one person has ever bought it and said they don't like how it smells that I know of not, not one. And, um, and you can water it down as much as you want. He makes it and you fill it up with whatever crystal water you want. And that way, if you can't burn sage in your workplace or where you live then you you can use this little spray to clear things but i also believe we're moving towards a time of course i sell the crystals i've studied crystals for a really long time megan knows her herbs and crystals we know these things mostly i know my herbs but this one i forgot the name of it but um that we sell in the store all these tools to help us but guess what i think we're moving to a time where we can move things with our own minds our mm-hmm. own energy and move the energy ourselves. Uh, so I, I don't think you can discount the fact that you can go into, you don't have to buy anything. If you don't have the budget to do that, you don't have to buy a thing and you can walk into your work environment and you can change the, the energy of that space just with your thoughts, like Megan said, just with the affirmations of what you're thinking and the intentions that you set. Yeah. And I think that's, I, I mean, honestly, that's kind of a beautiful note to end it on because We don't need all the exterior stuff. It really is, you know, the collective consciousness and Mm -hmm. how we connect with each other in that vibration is is truly the most powerful. Yeah. So it really is. Yeah. It was fun. So, yeah, we didn't cover all that big stuff that I said at the beginning, but (laughs) I do think it's important to try and find a guide that kind of helps direct you to your higher self and to source if you don't know how to get there and when you do do that you're not you don't have to worship them but it is kind of nice in that setting to pay homage to them on that journey Mm -hmm. yeah that's what i was trying to say and sometimes you will do that in your workplace gotcha yeah cool yeah all right everyone well thanks for listening in today to third eye thinkers and if you haven't subscribed yet please do so you can also follow michelle on soultopia at facebook and on instagram And you can follow me at Megan Benanti on Instagram and Tara Dallas on Facebook. So uh, we'll see you again soon. Thanks for joining us. Bye.